This is Eat Sleep Box and Repeat, and I'm delighted to be joined by Matthew Macklin, live from Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. Matt, how are you? Are you enjoying fight week out there in Jeddah? Yeah, yeah, it's been real good. Um, really starting to get the buzz now for the fight. But, uh, to be honest, ever since we landed, you can pick day by day. It's uh, it's picking up now. Um, obviously, at the press conference yesterday, media workout the day before that. So the grand arrivals on one day. So each day, discussions, conversations, little bits of TV work, the anticipation, the hype building, getting excited now. Um, so would you say you're 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 excited? You know, you're it's only about two days away now. Would you say that the excitement's really hit a climax now? Oh, big time! Like I say, since we got we got here Sunday night, and Monday was the grand arrivals. Tuesday was the media workouts. Uh, sorry, Wednesday then yesterday was the uh, the press conference. And each day you can feel the anticipation, the excitement, the hype. It's all starting to build. Obviously, you're looking at the fight, you know, we're, we're looking at the rematch here between Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua for three of the four recognised world titles. Um, Usyk, first time around in September, won a unanimous points decision. Do you think he'll be thinking in his head, that he, he, can, he can get the stoppage this time because, you know, people have said that if there was an extra round in that first fight, he might have might well have stopped Joshua. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, he said we we're going to start uh, round 13 of the last fight. That's how he sees this starting. But, you know, Joshua, Joshua was exhausted in that final round. Obviously, we're going into first round this time fresh. They'll be going in with the uh, experience of the last fight. He'll have analysed that to the moon and back. He'll have gone through it with Robert Garcia. He'll have, Robert Garcia will have put his own imprint on Joshua from a mindset point of view, from a tactical game plan point of view. Um, so I think it's going to be a very different fight. I think first time you could see Joshua kept it at distance. He tried to box with Usyk. And, you know, as we all saw, it was a mistake. Usyk was the better boxer. He was quicker, he was smarter, and, and he outboxed him quite comprehensively. So I think they know that they got it wrong. And I think that's something they've been really looking at, really addressing. And I think he's going to start the fight on Saturday very, very differently. I think I think he's going to be a quick start. You mentioned there, obviously, the new coach for, for Joshua and Robert Garcia. How much of a help do you think he'll be um, for Joshua? And I suppose he'll you'll have to come on with a completely different game plan because, as you say, first time around, the tactics just didn't work. Sorry, can you say that again? It broke up. Yeah, so it's just, obviously, you mentioned there about Robert Garcia and the new training. Um, he's, he's AJ's new coach. How much of an impact do you think that'll have on the fight? Well, look, it, it, you know, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. Um, you know, he, he's achieved so much. Uh, training with one guy, his, his style set really, but certainly I, I think from a, a mindset, a mental approach point of view, I think he can have a big influence on that. Uh, Robert Garcia has a lot of sex with a lot of success with um, aggressive fighters, you know, Marcus Medana, Antonio Margarito. These are guys that came out, took the center of the ring, backed their guys up, and you know what I mean? They're, they're aggressive, they didn't stand back on the back foot. and try and make wait for things to happen. They went out there and made things happen. And I think that's something that he'll have really been sort of trying to um, really, you know, integrate into Anthony Joshua's psyche so that when the fight... Because, you know, at, at this stage of his career, what can you really add, te you know, technically and everything? He, you know, he's, 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 the, he's the finished article. So reigniting a fire, you know, getting him sort of believing himself and reminding him of his achievement and some of the situations and hardships that he's been through, that he's lost and came back and done it before, you know. So, you know, although this is roles reversed because he, with the, the last time he was in Saudi with Andy Ruiz, he, he very much kind of boxed on the outside, kept it long, tied him up as opposed to the first fight when he got involved and got clipped, got caught. This time... First time with Usyk, sorry, he, he, he tried to box with him. He realised that didn't that didn't work out too well. This, so this time, I'm going to jump on him and I'm going to drag him into a fight. So, 
you know, just, just having conversations. Yeah, you do the work in the gym, you do the pad work, you spar with partners, you drill it. But sometimes when you're having something to eat afterwards or you go for a coffee in the night and you just sit down talking and that those conversations can be as important when you're trying to get the mindset right. But, like, you know, I, I would imagine they would, he would have been discussing things like the Hagler-Hearns fight. But, you know, Hagler didn't wait for Tommy Hearns to tee him up and catch him on the end of the shot. He literally jumped on him on the first bow and dragged him into a street fight. You know, so that fight was never going more than a few rounds. It was just, it was an unsustainable pace, but it was the right thing to do for Marvin Hagler. You know, maybe that's what Anthony Joshua had in So, obviously, there's been a, quite a lot of talk this week about weight, and everyone's been saying, oh, it could be coming in a good bit heavier. Joshua looks a bit trimmer. Obviously, you're there in Jeddah, and you've seen them in the flesh. Does it look like there's going to be a big difference to you? Does Usyk look a good bit heavier, or is it just kind of similar to what you remember in the in the first fight? Um, I mean, your mind can play tricks on you, can't it, fight week and that, but he definitely, uh, yeah, other, other, everyone was saying that, and I thought, yeah, he does look a bit bigger, upper body-wise, he looked like he beefed up a little bit. Uh, you know, whether that's a considerable amount or if it's a few pound, you know, he, I think he's he's grown into the heavyweight, a natural heavyweight anyway. Now he's, he's um, he was he was at his heaviest in the first fight with Joshua, and a, and a part of me thought, you know, what bulking up is that going to affect him detrimentally? Is it negatively? Is it going to slow him down because he's you know his mobility. And his agility is one of his best assets. And if he's bumped up too much, that might slow him down and that might not be a good thing. But then I, I guess, you know, he hasn't just put that weight on this week. He's, he's obviously put that weight on over a period of time and he's sparred at that weight and felt comfortable and sharp at that weight. And he smashed all his personal bests. In, in, in terms from a condition point of view, that he's in the best shape. Like, so, um, yeah, if, if he is a bit heavier, I don't, I, I, I can't imagine it'll be too substantially heavier. And then again, the same question for Joshua. I think people, the general consensus here is that Joshua's coming in, looks very trim, looks a bit lighter. Obviously, the lightest we've seen Joshua was in Saudi for the rematch with Ruiz, when he was he was less than seventeen stone. He was sixteen thirteen. Do you see him being? potentially even lighter than that and coming in at another career lightest? Um, I, I don't think so. I, I don't think that he's... I think for Ruiz in the rematch in Saudi, I think that it was a very conscious decision to come in lighter because they, they, they knew the tactic was going to be lots of movement, lots of peripheral movement, uh, sorry, lots of lateral movement around the peripheral of the, of the ring. You know, keep him turning, keep him resetting, boxing long, time up close. That was... You know, to be well conditioned for, for lots of movement over 12 rounds, that was clearly the game plan. So it was clearly a very conscious decision to come in lighter so that he'd be mobile and wouldn't have to carry too much muscle around. Um, if he comes in lighter this time, or as light as that, I don't think it'll be a conscious decision. Let's get light so we can be really mobile and fast. I just think, I don't think he's obsessing about the way. I think he's just training hard and the way it goes where it goes. You know, I don't think it's. I don't think they're being overly obsessed about whether he's full on. I think he's just getting shot far around. I, I think the mindset has been, the, from what I can gather from speaking to the Robert Garcia and AJ and everyone, and just hearing different conversations. I, I think the the thing they're focused on mostly is his mental approach, his mindset. You know, game plan. You've got to be the aggressor. You've got to impose yourself. You're the bigger guy. You're the guy who, who knocks people out. You've got the power. So make sure it's a fight where those assets come into play. Don't stand on the outside and let this guy who's quicker and more mobile have option. Obviously, you, you mentioned there about it's all about the mindset and stuff. And you've been there for fight weeks, so you've seen both of both of the fighters. Is there any telling factors really, or is it just are they both really calm, relaxed? Do they all sit, do they seem like that they both have their heads screwed on and just ready for the fight now? Yeah, very much so. And I don't think I haven't really picked up on anything uh, out of the ordinary of what you'd expect. Um, like I say, Joshua in his interviews did talk about mindset, did talk about mentality. 
Robert Garcia did as well. We did an interview with him and he was very much talking about, you know, you're not going to change Andy Joshua at this stage, but just trying to instill that confidence and that self-belief, just reminding him of who he is and what he's achieved and what he can do. And to, you know, he's quite there, sure. You know, you be the boss, dictate. That was that was really the, the key ingredient was was mindset, self-belief. Uh as opposed to you need to back him up behind the jab and the uppercuts are going to work. It wasn't really talking about combinations of shots. It was very much a mindset, um, mental approach thing. Um, and Usyk, I have to say, press conference, he looked supremely confident. He looked very motivated, very defiant. He talked about what was happening in the Ukraine and what it would mean for him to be able to fly the flag and represent his people. So... They both looked in good places. Um, I think we just it's it, it, it set up now really well for. I, I think I think it's going to be a really good fight. I really do. I don't, whatever happens, I think we're in for a great fight. Yeah. So I'm going to put you in both teams' shoes here, Matt. So Usyk first. If you're team Usyk, how do you make sure that you win again? How do you make sure you beat Joshua for the second time? What do you need to do to be victorious? I think I think for I think if I was telling Usyk, I'd be saying, look, this guy's going to come out and stick it on you because he has to. He knows he can't outbox you. He's going to come out and he's going to try and dictate. That's okay. You know, you don't have to go with him. But early on, make sure you give him some hard, drill him down the stand the line, make make him second guess things. He's only had X amount of months with this new trainer. Reverse type. It's all right. They're working on things, but have long enough to really integrate that into his natural repertoire don't know I said you you, you hit him hard let him know that he can't just walk through you then after that if, he, if he's held then on going for it let him go for it and just tuck up slide you know come underneath you don't have to go toe to toe with him you know pull on the matador you know let let you know even if you lose some of the earlier rounds as long as he's working at an unsustainable pace he, we can get him in the second half you know, if he blows up after six, seven rounds because he's gone bow to bow, you know, you can come on strong then. But it's, it's very much a case of damage limitations early on. Don't get caught with nothing stupid. So up, you know, and, and, and obviously if he gives you an opening, take him. And, same and then Joshua, yeah. Joshua, I, I'd be saying, you know, he knows you're going to come for him, but you've got to go for him, you know, because... If you stand back and box him and start allowing him to settle and take the centre of the ring and dictate, you know, you're going to start getting into that in and out and he's going to put you under mental pressure with his feints and that and his, his feet. You, you know, you, you're going to end up, your confidence is going to start doubting yourself and neg negative thoughts are going to kick in and uh, you, you're letting him control the fight then. It's very important that you can come, come, come out and, and dictate the terms, say Obviously, um, are you saying there then, Matt, that you can't see AJ winning on points at all? Because it was interesting yesterday um, at the press conference, he mentioned that you know he's prepared for the full thirty-six minutes and anything less than that really is a bonus. Um, I mean, I, I, I've no doubt he's in great shape, but I just think for Joshua to really be effective, he's got to set a hot pace. He's got to push it back. He's got to really put Usyk under pressure and try and force some mistakes. That kind of fight, to, to put Usyk under that, that kind of pressure, I think it's going to be a hot pace. You know, and I don't, and he's a big guy, Joshua. And, you know, it becomes a, becomes a for, the level of the, for, the, for the level of intensity, I think the fight needs to be fought at for it to, to be in Joshua's favour. I, I don't know if he can sustain that for 12 rounds. Yeah, very interesting. So obviously it's all speculation now and it's a lot of if, buts and maybes, but say Joshua does get beaten again, where does he go? I think it, I think it very much depends on the manner of the defeat. You know, if it's a, if it's a great fight and he really performs well, we sit there while he's a fight with Fury. But I think you'd have to, I think everyone would agree that his stuff his stuff probably rose in defeat because he really he went out banging, he went out on his shield, he showed massive heart. It was a really exciting fight. And you know, as much as everyone was praising 
fury for what a great performance and a win. Everyone was sort of taking the hat off too for Deontay Wilder saying, you know what, he dug in, fair play to him. So, it, it, there's so many, it just depends, you know, it really does depend on, on, on what kind of fight it is uh, and what the manner of the defeat was, you know, it was, just, it was a split decision. You know, they'll probably do they'll probably roll out and do it again. You know, if it's if he gets compre comprehensively outboxed and beaten up in five or six rounds, who knows then? You know, maybe maybe he wouldn't fight again or maybe he would. It, 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 it's impossible to say how he's gonna feel after the fight until we until we know what happens. Then then we can then we can all make educated guesses after that. Obviously in the first fight there was a, a rematch clause, which we are now seeing at the weekend. Say Joshua and then flip that 180 and Joshua does win on Saturday night. It's the scores are one, ap one apiece. Do you see it inevitable that there would be a trilogy um, then between the two? Or, you know, do you think that if you're Joshua, you're like, oh, I don't want to fight Usyk again. Um, let's go for all the belts. I think if, uh, if Joshua beats Usyk on Saturday night, all roads lead to few, all roads lead to the ring for undisputed. And look, maybe and then and then Usyk could maybe get the winner. Who's under more pressure in this fight, um, Usyk or Joshua? Obviously, Usyk. You've mentioned there the whole everything going on in Ukraine, so that's pressure in itself. Although a different pressure, or would you say more pressures on Joshua just because you know if he if he loses again, then he has to probably and it's say say it's not say it isn't really a close fight, and um, the manner of defeat wasn't great. Does he then have to properly rebuild? So who is more to lose? Yeah, I think I think probably from what you said there, probably Joshua's probably um, it's probably worse for Joshua if he loses. I think Usyk is undefeated; it would be his first defeat, you know. So with that in mind, uh, you know, I, I think it, I think a loss will hurt Joshua more than a loss would hurt Usyk. And do you see Usyk? A lot of people have him right at the top of their pound for pound lists already. Um, you know, with the likes of Terence Crawford, etc. Um, what, what about you? Do you think he's already point for point number one? And if he wins on Saturday, has he just solidified himself as the best fighter on the planet? I think he's solidified. If he wins on Saturday night, he, he's definitely one of the best uh, pound for pound. You know, good fighters there is it? Terence Crawford, hey, uh, you know, Canelo. The, 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 there's a lot of really good fighters there. Pound for pound is third. The, the very authentic, I think we don't, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a massive fan of them because it's, you know, it's almost impossible to compare a featherweight and a heavyweight, you know, the, you know, but look, he, 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 without any shadow of a doubt, uh, Usyk is one of the uh, real superstars in boxing. Finally, Martin, thanks for your time um, so far. I want, you, I want you to get a prediction. Uh, I want you to give us a prediction here. So Saturday night, Alexander Usyk, Anthony Joshua, the rematch. Why does it go down? Who wins? Hi. I, I could see how both guys could win. I could see Joshua coming out really quickly, getting on top of Usyk and having a lot of success. But, you know, if he doesn't get him out of there after six rounds with the, the pace that he's probably going to have to, that he's going to have to set to make it a fight where he's going to come out on top, then I think, I think he'll have gassed out by then. And I think probably... The second half, then Usyk will step it up and probably even maybe get the stoppage around nine, ten rounds. So you give a case for both there. Can you give me one at all? Can Can you pick? Uh, yeah. Well, look at you know. Um, I, I think I, th I think Usyk. I've said that's really a big Usyk team. Well, listen, Matt. I really appreciate your time, and thank, thanks for thanks for all of that. And uh, enjoy Saturday night. We'll we'll all be tuning in. I'm sure. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Bye bye.